Oh, hello. Welcome to Crumbs and Doilies in Soho. Obviously, I'm enjoying a delicious raspberry ripple ice cream. This is actually soft serve raspberry ripple, and I am going to show you how to make it because summer is made for ice cream, so come with me. Right, let's get on with the making. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to make raspberry goo so that that's got time to cool down before we use it in the ice cream. And hopefully you will have seen Nikki's Tuesday tips from a few weeks ago where she showed you in great depth how to make soft fruit goo. It's very, very simple. So I've got a saucepan here. I've got 400 grams of frozen raspberries. And if you want to use fresh, go ahead, pop them in the pan. And to that, I'm going to add 125 grams of caster sugar and then just get it onto a medium heat. So those are going to melt and bubble away with the sugar um, and you want to keep that on the heat for about 15 to 20 minutes, giving it a stir every now and then and it will thicken eventually and it will become a really nice jammy consistency. So when your jam is ready, it is going to be this lovely, thick, goopy, loose, jammy consistency. I've actually put mine through a sieve to get rid of the seeds, and by all means, don't do that if you don't want to. It's fine by me. Um, now I'm going to get on with making the soft serve ice cream base, which is super quick and super easy. So quick, in fact, that I've actually made ice cream from scratch and been eating it in the same evening, so this is definitely a win. So I've got a bowl here with 185 grams of double cream. I'm going to add 130 grams of liquid glucose first. So liquid glucose is the stuff which is going to keep this ice cream scoopable. Um, if we replaced it with sugar, it would probably be the same amount of sweetness, but it just wouldn't set scoopy. So to that, I'm going to add a teaspoon of good quality vanilla extract and give it all a stir. So once that's all mixed together, you can put that to one side. We don't need to heat that with the milk like you would normally with a normal ice cream custard. That's why this recipe is super quick and easy. So I'm going to put that to one side. And now I'm going to mix my egg and my sugar together. I've got one large egg and 70 grams of sugar, and I'm going to whisk it all up. So we're not trying to make this pale and fluffy or anything. We're just trying to dissolve the sugar a bit. So while I'm doing this, I'm actually going to get on with heating my milk. So that's already in a pan. I've got 300 millilitres of whole milk. I'm going to put that onto a medium heat and I want to bring it to a scalding temperature. And scalding is when it starts to kind of bubble up and rise up in the pan. What you don't want is to leave it for it to bubble over and really burn. Um, but what you do want is for it to be hot enough that it's just boiling and that will help it to cook the egg so that this is all safe. And it's scalding, so I'm going to pour it over my eggs, whisking at the same time. I'm going to do it quite slowly because I don't want to shock the eggs. So that's all my milk in. Now for regular custard-based ice cream recipes, including my own, um, you would put your custard back into the pan and then stir it around until it's thickened. But in this recipe, I've tried doing that. I've tried it any which way and it doesn't make any difference at all. And in fact, it speeds it up a lot doing it the way that I'm going to show you. So that is to add all your other ingredients now, basically, and just stir it through. So once that's all mixed really thoroughly and it's nice and smooth, you just then need to cool it down to at least room temperature. You can use this in your ice cream machine at room temperature, but if you have the time, it does help and just speed things up to put it in the fridge and get it cold. Either way, you want to put some cling film on it before you cool it. Right, my custard is very cold now, so it's ready to use. Like I said though, room temperature is absolutely fine if you're in a rush. Sometimes you just need ice cream. Um, so, this is a point at which I have to tell you that it is much, much, much easier if you have an ice cream machine. As you know, use, <laughs> using ice cream machines does take a lot of the brute force out of making ice cream. And this particular ice cream base does need quite a lot of activity. So if you don't have an ice cream machine, one of these or a similar one, then I would just put the bowl into the freezer and whisk it every sort of half an hour, 20 minutes, quite vigorously. It'll start to thicken up and eventually, you know, it'll become harder to whisk, but that's the only way you're going to get this effect. And then once it's sort of nice and scoopy, then put it into a Tupperware and leave it in the freezer. But I'm going to cheat with my big old machine. So I'm going to pour it directly into my bucket and then put the lid on. And I find with this machine and quite a lot of other machines that I've used in the past, about 45 to 50 minutes is the golden sweet spot, so set your timer for that and watch it churn. 
Now while this is going, obviously go and do your hair, get a drink, make a sandwich, do whatever you want, but make sure that your raspberry goo is nice and cool and also a top tip is the Tupperware that you're going to put this in at the end, put it in the freezer now so that it's super cold before you put the ice cream in. Okie dokie, that is my ice cream all churned and looking really lovely and thick. Now obviously it needs to go into a receptacle, so grab your freezing cold Tupperware. And I like to start this procedure with a little bit of raspberry goo to start, so that there's a ripple all the way through right to the very bottom. And now I'm going to put half of my ice cream in before I start rippling. I want the ripples to go all the way through. So flatten it out a little bit with your spatula. Then you want to grab your goo and give it a couple of generous blobs. And then using like a palette knife or a spoon even, just ripple it through and top that off with the rest of your ice cream. And then once it's all in there, another couple of blobs of raspberry goo and for its final ripple. And then just give it a little bash down on the worktop, just to settle all those crevices that you just made. And then back into the freezer for at least two hours and it will not get super duper hard. As I said, this is very scoopable soft serve. And that is the finished soft serve raspberry ripple ice cream. It's super easy, you get ice cream in a matter of hours, which is brilliant for all you ice cream addicts out there like me. So let me know how you get on in the comments box below. And also, if you are in London and you're visiting my shop, then you should definitely check out my vlog that I did recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, where I showed you my favorite ice cream joint in Soho. So check that out because there's loads of other really yummy things, not just here. I mean, obviously, Crumbs and Doilies is the best. Anyway, I've got a lot of ice cream to get through, so I will see you later. Bye.